Dearly beloved, I welcome you all here today with salutations, greetings, and great news. I'm happy to announce and present this new and readily available, the delicious, scrumptious, glorious, excellent, and custom limited new Peter Pen. That's right. This one is amazing. All right. I'm excited about this one. Put that pencil away. I'll show you what we've got here. Uh, where to start? All right. As you can see, there's four different nib types I have here to show you. Fine, medium, broad, and stub. Custom box art made by me. As with all these Peter pens, I like making these and putting my name on it because I get to have such a um, integral part of all the customization and everything. So here you have it, the Peter pen. Excuse me. It opens up. It's a novelur. And in there is the pen. Comes with a little wrench for adjusting the piston if you need to. Beautiful. Slides back in. Has a little pull tab right there, made out of silk or something wonderful. And look at that. I made a doodle, I drew a picture, and it was engraved on this clear pen body. So it's a cool transparent pen, but you can see through it and see the lines going around it on both sides. As always, it has this built-in piston converter for sucking up ink. It holds the ink inside of it, so you don't have to, you don't have to buy uh, cartridges or anything. Look at that it's beautiful. The lid comes off. Here it is. This is the stub nib. Nice black nib, black accents on everything. Yeah, it looks cool. What do you think? And you can, and you can feel the lines too. There's a, there's a texture to it. So there's a tactile element if you're into that sort of thing, which, which I am. Very much so. The nib has cool designs on it. Zoom back out. I've got some Novelure inks here, four different inks for four different pens. I'm gonna put one ink in each pen. And then the crowning the crowning achievement, the, 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 the cherry on top, where's the fourth one? Sorry, it was in the kitchen. The cherry on top with this pen is that each one comes with a limited edition Peter Draws little sketchbook, right? Has the same art on it from the art in the back of the, the box. And, you know, it even says Peter Draws on the back here. It's got the little novelure narwhal on there. And if you're, if you're into a little bit of structure, it's got the, the dots on there, a little dot grid, which... You know, if you don't want the structure, the dots don't really get in the way. But if you do, you know, if you want it for writing, they can still provide some straight lines and stuff like that. So we're going to be doing, I'm going to do, I think, a little series of drawings in here with the different pens and inks and colors we've got. Uh, I've got a couple of the pens already loaded up with some ink. Here's the fine nib. I have uh, green, the green dark forest ink in there. It's hard to see. How green it is unless you you know when it's all up on top of itself and condensed but once you draw with it you can see i think this is the the broad nib which i have the orchid flower ink in it and you can see a hint of that that purple in there and i, I when I, I don't even fill it up all the way because even just a little blurb of a little blurb of ink in there lasts a long time it's more than you think um all right, let's put ink in these other two pens though. We've got the, the orchid flower, the dark forest, done. How about the 
for the the stub nib, the Atlantic Blue would do good. I'll show you how to fill up the pen if you've never done it before. It's very easy. Uh, there's a, a lot of different ways to do it, actually. It's down to personal preference. I had a paper towel here. I, personally, I always keep a paper towel on hand just because, you know, you're dealing with bottles of ink, fountain pens, just, you know, maybe don't wear a white shirt, but, you know, it depends how prepared you are. First, you want to turn the back of it so that uh, the piston goes down, right? So that then you can turn it and the piston will go up, sucking ink up into the reservoir. And then I'm just gonna stick it in here and turn it and it will start sucking ink up in there. Since there was already some air in the nib and in the system there, there's a little uh, pocket of air in there. And if you wanted to get rid of this and get it a little fuller, you could uh, squeeze it out, you could lower it down and pull it back up in again. I'm not too worried about it personally, because like I said, um, even this amount of ink goes a long way. Plus, sometimes I like to change up the ink in a little while anyways. And you know how in TV shows, when they're about to stick someone with a needle, they go ch -ch -ch and squirt a little bit out the top to make sure that there's no air in there. You can kind of do a similar thing here if you're careful. And uh, some bubbles might come out, but you can get rid of the air at the top with some bubbles by just holding it upright and turning it like so. Made a slight mess, but now there's mostly just ink in there. It's fine either way, don't worry too much about it, but feel free to experiment with it a little. There you go. Well, that is a nice blue. Blue with the stub nib. Peter Penn. Get yours now, there's a link in the description. There's only 500 of these available, and then they're gonna be gone forever. Let's go get yours now. Thank you to everyone who has bought them in the past. Appreciate all the support. Uh, I'm thankful to all of you for making something like this possible. You know, it's a dream for any, any artist or anything to be able to have their own line of pens. So I'm very, very thankful and um, yeah, thank you. All right, one more pen. We're gonna put the Mango Sorbet. Kind of an orangish hue, a burnt orange of sorts in the medium nib. Let me put the cap back on the blue first. <laughs> Leaving a ink nib, I mean an ink bottle uncapped. Sometimes you live to regret it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes when I'm refill working on my fountain pens, filling them up, cleaning them, I feel like I'm some kind of crazy scientist working in a lab, like I'm working with specimens and samples and doing weird science experiments and stuff. Sometimes I put on a lab coat and gloves and goggles and stuff just to complete the fantasy. And you know, that never hurts, fantasizing a little bit. I just, I just had the paper towel, did I throw it away? I, I threw it away prematurely. Oh yeah, oh that's an interesting color. I like that. Oh, that's nice. It's a much lighter ink, but that's not, that's what you want sometimes. It's good to have variety and options. Peter, pen. I'm bad at writing and talking and thinking at the same time. Medium. Interesting. You get light lines when you go fast, but if you go a little bit slower and push down a little bit, the ink will flow. The nib flexes a little bit too if you push. If you want darker lines and a little bit more ink flow, so you've got options. Let me know if you have any questions about the pen. Remember, link in the description. Get yours now and get your uh, limited edition sketchbook with the pen, the box, the whole shebang. All right, let's do some drawing now. Let's see what we've. Are, I've already got one one drawing in here with the the forest. The forest green is that what it's called? 
dark forest. And so let's do some more. Some things I do with a lot of my sketchbooks that I'm drawing with fountain pens that put down a lot of ink is get a little piece of paper to put behind the page to catch any little droplets. So that's probably what I'm gonna do here. I do that with my other bigger sketchbook too. So it's kind of a habit. All right, let's go. All right, so I'm gonna do five, I don't know, just, a, just gonna do a bunch of nice fun little doodles here in this, this sketchbook. And you get the sketchbook with the pen. It comes with it, no extra charge. And once again, this pen is a collaboration between me, Novelur Pens, and Gold Spot Pens. So thank you to them for working with me on this. It's been great. And like sometimes companies try to work with me and it's very impersonal. It's just a bunch of emails or something. But these people, uh, like I've met, Frank from Novelur Pens at a pen convention once here at, at, at Raleigh. That's one town over in North Carolina. I talk to Kieran from Gold Spot all the time on the phone. And uh, so they're just um, great people to work with. And I'm gl really glad for the opportunity. And so thank you to them. And thank you to all of you just for, for people who buy the pens or just for watching my videos and tuning in. The people who leave comments. I know a lot of you leave comments and... I don't get around to uh, replying to them all, but I just, I read them all. I promise. I'm sorry that I don't reply to more of them, uh, but thank you. And let me know if you have any more questions about the pen. It's, um, it's a, I feel like it's a pretty good beginner pen. And also I know some of you have little collections going of some of the Peter pens and that's pretty cool. I never, I, I still think back to times in the past when I was like, oh, it'd be cool to have what if there was a Peter pen? And now there's even, um, well, a Peter sketchbook doesn't sound quite as cool because it's not alliteration. A Peter pad, you know? Maybe one day, Peter, Peter paint, Peter pencil, Peter panels, Peter, mm, Peter pools, Peter pumpernickel, Peter p pandas. Uh, you know, the options are, you know, I've got ideas, <laughs> obviously. Um, anyways, I just finished my first week of school. Um, let me, the most challenging class so far, uh, well, I've only, yeah, I have three classes. I think I've told you this before. Let me look. One of them is figure drawing. Only been to, you know how the first week of school is, right? Uh, like the first day, you're always just like sitting there. It's super boring. You're just going over the syllabus. A couple of my professors, I have two in-person classes and one online class. The online class is the art history class, which is okay. Because I like that I can, you know, you get the assigned reading in the textbook. And there are online lectures which you can watch at your own speed and convenience. And that works really great for me, actually. Because I can, you know watch them whenever I, whenever it works for me. And there's just like a deadline to take the quiz and there's some like discussion boards online. Um, but the, the two classes I have in line, I mean, in person, these, the professors, they, um, I mean, I, sometimes I forget that people in real life watch here, listen to these videos and they could get to them that I'm talking about them. I love them. They're amazing, but they, sometimes they talk a lot. Right. Uh, and it's okay. Cause, so sometimes you do just need to sit and gather your thoughts and listen, even when you want to be working on stuff. You want to be making art, but they are just good at talking for a long time. Uh, but it's okay, because uh, we, I've had we've had one session so far in the figure drawing class with a model doing gesture drawings, and that stuff is. Uh, I mean, I've it used to be when I lived in Chicago. I would go to people's, um, I don't remember how I found them, online somewhere that people would have like art studios and they would hire a model and you know you would go and pay like 10 or $15 or something for one or two hours and there'd be like 10 or 15 people there, excuse me, and they'd have like free drinks and stuff, which kind of makes sense now considering how, how much they were making if they charge 
10 or 15 people, $20 each. And I think the models probably only get paid like $20 an hour. They're making a pretty good profit. But I mean, I guess that's the advantage of having a studio space, uh, which also costs a lot of money. So who knows? You know, more power to them. Uh, it would be cool to have my own studio space sometime and be able to organize something like that. Anyways, uh, but like I used to go to some figure drawing sessions in Chicago. And then when I lived in Wilmington, North Carolina, the local museum had a similar thing like and the thing about the figure drawing sessions I used to go to is that there was no instruction whatsoever right it was not there was no criticism or anything it was just like go and draw and do whatever you want sometimes there were short poses sometimes there were long poses because sometimes it seemed like the majority you know if it seemed like the consensus of most people like there was a bunch of people that were like, oh, I want to, uh, I want to, I'm working on an oil painting or something and it's just going to take me a while. So, so sometimes it was ridiculous. Like people were like, I want to do a two hour pose, you know, and then the model would have to like be in one pose for the whole session, you know, obviously taking breaks and they would like put little tape marks on the, on the podium to mark their, uh, spot and, you know, so they could come back to the exact same pose after the break and then everyone would be nitpicky about how they weren't sitting in the exact same pose or moving slightly over the two hours. It's a difficult thing. Uh, but I would usually get very bored and leave early for those. I like it when the poses are like five minutes or less usually. And thankfully, that seems like what we're at, where we're at so far with this figure drawing class at school. We're just doing the jig figure. We're doing the gesture drawing, which are very quick, um, immediate, like just getting the essence of the form, the shape of the person down on the paper, right? Uh, but it's more challenging than I expected. But it's, I'm also thankful to have actually some instruction and, you know, like some feedback. The, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Um, yeah. The other class, the, the sculpture class is, uh, the, fr well, I'm, today is, I'm recording this on a Tuesday. No, well, it's Tuesday. Well, I thought it was Monday, but it's at, it's one thirty AM. Anyways, tomorrow, no, in two days. Well, soon I'm going to get the work that she's going to tell us the first assignment. So then I'll know how to feel about it. All I know is it's going to be the medium that we're going to work in is wood, and I'm a little apprehensive about that, um, but I'm trying to reserve judgment until I get know what the assignment is exactly. I don't know, wood is, for some reason, wood isn't my favorite material to work in, but I, that, I know that that's a bad attitude to go into it with, so I'm trying to go into it with a good attitude and know that there's still, for, for one problem, there's a, the, the wood workshop at school is pretty nice. It's just when you have, I think our class probably has like 16 people in it or something. And it just gets really cramped really quick when there's 16 people in there. And I don't know, I'll figure it out. It's going to be okay. I just keep telling them whenever, whenever I start having too many negative thoughts or start worrying about the future, just tell myself it's going to be okay. It's going to be great. And I, feel, I find, I think a lot of my problems often come from not telling myself that enough. Uh, because if, if I go into a situation already deciding that it's going to be bad, that drastically increases the chances that I'm not going to enjoy it or I'm not going to get the most out of it. But if I go in thinking it's going to be okay, actually, actually determined that it's going to be okay, then the chances are actually pretty great that it might be okay. So yes, it is going to be okay. And, um, and I'm going to make some cool sculptures out of wood. Actually, I have an idea of in, somewhere in my head. I don't know if it will be this one that I'll make some kind of sculpture uh, out of wood. May, maybe this maybe should be a metal sculpture, but something about how it has like some gas lines attached to it. And then it, it ignites and... Maybe if it's a wood sculpture, it will somehow have these torches attached to it and it will somehow consume 
itself with its own torches. So it'll be kind of a performance piece in that sense. That like it will only exist once that it'll be a sculpture, but in its truest sense, it will be when it destroys itself. Also, I don't know. I have, I just want to attach gas lines and have fire coming out of a sculpture. If I make it out of metal, then maybe I can make it some sort of weird, um, ritualistic thing where in the center of it, you can put things and the sculpture can like burn things that you put in the center. I don't know. That's just that's some ideas that are in my head for some reason. I don't know. Is that art? I don't know. If I just have ideas about things burning. <laughs> um, anyways, thanks. Thanks for watching everyone. That's where I'm at soon. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little update. Uh, maybe I'll try to tell you about what I've been learning in my art history class, because if I try to regurgitate it to you, maybe without looking at my notes, that will be a good way for me to study and see how much I have retained. Uh, yeah. Anyways, goodbye. Thank you to everyone who buys a pen and hope you're all doing okay. All right. I believe in you. It's going to be okay. I, I'm, I'm sure of it. I know it. All right. All right. Goodbye. 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 Okay. All right. See you. Okay. Okay. All right.